Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Pastor Terry Hopkins with Middle Eastern Power Ministries, <clears throat> and we're coming to you uh, live on Zoom and Facebook. Uh, as I mentioned uh, before, that we're working on some new equipment and new uh, software. So, uh, if there's any glitches, just bear with us. We're getting it together. Amen. At this time, we're going to uh, open up in prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you for your blessings, watching over us and keeping us. We ask that you continue to lead and guide us in your truth, that we might be found in your will and, and obedience to your word and in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We also want to uh, say a prayer for Mother Mary Collins, who lost her uh, grandson this week uh, to a violent incident. You know, it's sad when we lose anyone, but our young people are dying far too, too often in, in such horrific ways. So just put a prayer up for her, amen, that the Lord will keep her and strengthen her in her time of bereavement. Amen. This time, we're going to go to our, our lesson on today. I don't have the slides today, but I do have the equipment. So we just want to make sure that we can do it flawlessly before we go back into projecting it. Amen. So going to our scripture, our lesson on today, it's going to be entitled, A Brighter Day. Amen. Begins with Job chapter 14, verses 1 through 2. It says, a man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. You know, it's uh, coincidentally enough, this is one of those verses of scripture that's uh, commonly used uh, during funerals and uh, memorials and things of that nature. But what it's letting us know is that it doesn't matter how long you're in this world, you're gonna have trouble. It may come from any source, any direction, at any given time. And you're gonna to have to deal with that trouble. And so this is what we need to understand is that God is there to help us through our troubles. Amen, he's, help, he's there to help us keep ourselves through the trouble. And also he's, help, he's there to help us to see down the road where trouble might be amen um they used to tell us growing up that you know if, if you don't know if it's right or wrong then just stay away from it you know just stay away from it. if you can't tell whether there's evil in it you know stay away from it abstain from the very appearance of evil that's what they taught us <clears throat> and so trouble is the same way you don't know what form it might come in but it's definitely coming because the scripture says so so with your few days that you're here, you will have some trouble. Amen. Uh, Psalms 121 verses 1 through 8 says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth. It says, and even forevermore. Amen. We have to look to God uh, for our deliverance. You know, we, and that was one of my mother's favorite scriptures. I'll lift up mine eyes unto the hill from whence cometh my help. Sometimes you can get yourself in situations where you just see it as hopeless. Not only do you not see help coming, but you can't even justify why help would even be in your favor. But this, this, this word today is just to encourage you just to be strong. Hold on. Help is on the way. You know, you dial 911 in a time of emergency, and <clears throat> between the time you dial and the time they get there, whatever the situation might be, You've got to be able to maintain and hold on. If it's someone that's uh, unconscious or choking, then you, you've got to administer CPR or the Heimlich maneuver. You've got to do all these things until the help arrives. So when we're in our trouble states, we've got to hold on. We've got to pray fast and continue to believe and trust in God until our change comes. And if our change doesn't come right away, we still got to hold on. That's the point. That's the point in faith holding on, there will be a brighter day. Amen. First Samuel, and I want to talk about this individual in conjunction with the lesson. Uh, First Samuel 5, 
uh, chapter 1, verses 5 through 17, and it says, But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb, and her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. Now we're talking about Elkanah and Hannah, his wife. <clears throat> he gave unto his other wife, Peninnah, gifts because she bare him sons and daughters. But Hannah was barren. But he loved Hannah even more, so he gave her more of the natural things, of those, uh, you know, resources. But that's not what was in Hannah's heart. That's not what her desire was. What Hannah wanted was to be fruitful in the natural sense. In that day and time, to be barren, to, for a woman to be barren was considered a disgrace. Amen. She was looked down upon. And so Hannah wanted to be, as one minister says, she wanted to be productive. Amen. So Anna was struggling through this situation, but neither did she know there was a brighter day, but she continued to hold on. Verse number seven says, and as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and didn't eat. Then said Elkanah, her husband to Hannah, why weepest thou and why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than 10 sons? Amen. So he, Elkanah didn't understand her situation. He didn't understand what she was going through, what she was feeling. He didn't understand her plight. He even looked on himself and said, hey, look, what about me? You know, you don't see any value in me. Am I not worth more than you having a bunch of kids? But her problem was not with Elkanah, which he didn't understand. So a lot of times we don't understand uh, one another in discussion. Amen. And at some point in time, there has to be a resolve when there are issues of some sort. I believe it's in Isaiah, it says, come now and let us reason together. Amen. And, and we all have to stand uh, <clears throat> in accordance with that, with reasoning. And with reasoning, it's, it's like anything. It's like negotiation. It's like a uh, courtroom. You know, it's like, um, what's the word I want to use? Um, arbitration. When you go through these situations, there has to be an arbiter or mediator. And sometimes if they're not, then you have to be able to mediate amongst yourselves. And so in doing so, when a side is presented, it's not to be discarded, but it's to be taken into consideration. And we all can learn from that. Amen. What arbitration is, and you come to a medium. And if you don't ever come to a point of agreement, then you simply have to agree to disagree. That's what the unions are about, the working union, uh, the bar collective bargaining union, union uh, agreements. You may not agree with the employer on the amount of money to be paid. Therefore, you strike and you don't work. The employer doesn't get anything done. So you come back to the bargaining table. Why am I saying all this? Because this is part of hearing out and understanding. Elkanah didn't understand Hannah as she was going through her situation. Now, verse number nine says, so Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Say, uh, now Eli, <clears throat> the priest, sat upon the seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and she wept sore. This was, this was really dealing with her. This was really bothering her. She couldn't deal with this um, without showing the emotional stress and struggle she was going through. She didn't realize that there was a brighter day. And oftentimes we don't see that brighter day. We see clouds looming, we see gloom, we see doom, but we don't see a brighter day. And, but you gotta see it before you encounter it. Verse 11 says, and she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto thee, unto the Lord all the days of his life. There shall no razor come upon his head. So she is vowing that God, if you, if you just give me a son, I will dedicate him to you. And how often do we make pledges unto the Lord when we're struggling, when we're in situations, when we need something? Amen. We say, look, God, if, if you just do this this one time, I promise you this won't happen again. That whatever the negotiation matter might be on your half. Now, understand, too, that you don't have to negotiate anything with God. All you have to do is ask. 
But if you do negotiate, one scripture says better to not make a vow than to make one and break it. So let's keep our word with God so that brighter day will come and it'll come with joy. So Hannah's still grieved. She's still praying. She's calling out on the Lord. <clears throat> and in verse 12, it says, and it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli mocked her mouth. It says, now Hannah, she spake in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunken. Now, how often do we view and not hear? We assume, but we don't know. Listen. A brighter day is about our own rejoicing. Amen. So don't let the enemy discourage you by assuming something about you. Amen. When you're going through uh, your struggles and your trials, someone may think something else is going on with you. Have no clue, have no idea, but they don't take the time to come and find out and ask. You know, if they were simply asked, they may find out <laughs> what's really going on with you. Amen. So I, you know... <clears throat> I had a situation uh, where I was, you know, had things on my mind, wasn't paying attention to what was going on around me, you know, and the next thing I understand some time later is that it was an assumption that I had an alt or something against someone else. That individual was far from my mind. I was dealing with something within trying to see the brighter day coming ahead. Amen. And so we have to do that as well. Let's not just assume somebody is feeling some kind of way or reacting some kind of way. If you don't know, ask. If you don't ask, leave it alone. Don't assume. Just pray that they might find that brighter day. Now, Eli, he thinks she's drunk. He's the priest. And now, <clears throat> and listen to this. Now, Eli had his own shortcomings. Absolutely did. So much to the point where God raised up this same child of Hannah's, which was Samuel, to replace him. It did not negate who Eli was. It did not negate his duties as a servant of the Lord. And so if we go on a little bit, uh, verse 14 says, Eli, uh, Eli said unto her, how long wilt thou be drunken? And he said, how long are you going to keep drinking? <laughs> you, you just wasted, woman. How long are you going to keep doing all this? And she, he said, put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord, I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunken neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. People can't read minds. Individuals could be pouring themselves out to God. But listen, stay encouraged. It doesn't matter what anyone thinks. Your brighter day is coming. You just keep on praying. You just keep on fasting. You just keep on being encouraged in the Lord. Amen. Going on to the next verse here. <clears throat> says, count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial. She said, no, 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 no. I'm not one of them ungodly women. He said, for out of the abundance of my complaint and griefs have I spoken here to. She said, then Eli answered and said, go in peace and the Lord God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Right away, her diligence brought upon her blessing. Now, it didn't bring it immediately, but it brought on the promise of the blessing. All the time, our deliverance won't come right away. You know, the old saying, we say, we, he may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. I think there's a song even said, he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. So he's absolutely on time. He may not come when you want him, when you think he should be there, because it's critical and it's dire to you. But he comes at the most opportune time. Amen. So much so that all you can say is, God did it. Wasn't nothing I did, but God did it. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the next verse. Romans 8 and 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. Every situation that you go through does not mean that you're unsaved. It does not mean that you're lost. It does not mean that you're backslidden. Even if you have slipped and fallen, it does not mean that you're in a state of backsliding to stay until God returns. No, listen, <laughs> all things work together for the good. For every error you make, there's a lesson to be learned. For every mistake that's made, there's a correction to be understood. 
See, know this, that God already knew that when this day and time came, that you were going to be in the situation that you're in now. He already knew that you were going to be discouraged like you are now. But he also knew that I would come on and I would say, hey, be encouraged, lift up your head, be encouraged in the Lord. He also knew that you were going to be contacted by others that will encourage your heart. Amen. You're going to run across a webcast or a live stream or someone was going to call you and encourage you. He knew all these things beforehand. You just didn't know it. So you felt like this was the end of the end. But God is saying, no, no, no. All these things work together for the good as long as you love the Lord. And he's called you according to his purpose. Amen. This is where we're at. There's a brighter day coming. So let's be encouraged. Don't let the enemy take our joy. Don't let him discourage us. Don't let him beat us down. Don't let him take our, our, our faith away in God. Amen. That's what he wants to do. He wants us to doubt God. And what other way to doubt God as in <clears throat> like what he did with Job? He touched everything that Job had, his family which was the closest thing to him. And when he did that, he thought for sure Job would curse God and die. But Job said, no, no. He said, a man is born of a woman, just a few days and full of trouble. He, he quoted that scripture. And he said, all the days of my appointed time, I'm going to wait until my change comes. And that's where we are. We've got to wait. St. John 14. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. We've got to have faith. We've got to believe. We have to believe. In your darkest hour, don't stop believing because hope is all you have left. Amen. Hope. And that hope is a great thing. Amen. That hope is a great thing. Amen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Amen. So don't let it doubt. Don't let the doubt come in. Don't let it take you down. Keep your head up high. Keep your head up high. Kirk Franklin wrote a song saying, it's going to be a brighter day. Hmm. A brighter day. Psalms 27, 14 says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. We've got to exercise patience. For in patience possess we our soul. Amen. A part of the fruit of the spirit is patience, long suffering. We've got to learn to abide in patience. Amen. You've got to abide in patience. Now, a lot of you are probably like I am. Patience is one of my, I can't say strong suits. I can't say weaker suits, but in some things I have the greatest of patience. In other things, I have very little patience. Uh, if, if I'm in a midst of a hobby or accomplishing something or doing something or fixing something, working on something. I have very little patience when it comes to acquiring material or certain things that I need to get the job done. So I go right away to get it. And if I can't find it, I'm searching diligently. And then sometimes some things you can't find, you just have to go on Amazon and order. And now your patience goes into action because it's coming when it gets there. Amen. We have to grow in our patience, amen. And the only way we grow in patience is that we have situations that cause us to act in non-patience, act in a hurry, act rash. There's going to be a brighter day. Psalms 31 through 5 says, I will exalt thee, O Lord, exalt, extol, excuse me, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. Raise your hands if God's healed you when you cried out. I've been there. Amen. It says, O Lord, verse 3, how thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, and thou that I should not go down to the pit. It says, Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. You know, last week on Thursday, I, I taught a lesson say, uh, remember the time when, amen. It says, oh, ye saints of the Lord, give thanks unto God, amen. We've got to have a thankful spirit, a thankful mindset. Keep praising and magnifying God, amen. Yet things are changing, yes. We don't church like we used to. We don't gather like we used to. Uh, there's a whole lot of things that have changed, but one thing that has not changed, and that's the Lord. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, and he still dwells in the midst of praises. So if you can muster up a praise unto God, God will be in your presence. He'll make sure that he's in your midst. Amen. And you know what? 
it said where two or three are gathered together, uh, I will, then I'll be in the midst. Well, you know what? You're one and God makes two. So there you go. You don't need nobody else. Finally, Psalms 30, one through five, the fifth verse says, for his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen. It said weeping may endure. It may not endure for a night. And what if it endureth beyond the night? That brighter day is that joy is coming in the morning. It cometh. It means it's continuing to come. We, I'm going to read it again. It says weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. I don't care what the situation is. Amen. As long as you got life and breath, you got a chance. Don't let it put you down. Don't let it dismay you. Don't let it bring down your faith. Don't let it discourage you. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. There will be a brighter day. Amen. A brighter day. And as long as you're living, that day will be. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for all of you that joined us here on today. We ask that you continue to pray for us. Amen. And go to our website and see what we got going, releasedinpower.org. You can also find all of our recorded videos on YouTube at Released in Power Network. Amen. And hopefully by Thursday, we will simulcast. And that way you can see it on the website. You can see it on YouTube. You can see it on Facebook. And you can see it on Zoom. And you can see it on Boxcast. All those resources at one time. Amen. We thank God for you. Uh, we're going to continue to pray for you. Pray for one another. Pray for those that are struggling. Amen. And let's keep our hearts and minds stay on the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessing. As you continue to bless and keep our brothers and our sisters, O oh Lord, with their hearts and minds stayed on you and bless them as they go throughout their day. In Jesus' name, amen. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. God bless you.